Folks, hello and welcome to Tavern Chat. I'm your host, Eric Tenkar, your bartender in the OSR, your main proprietor at the Tenkar's Tavern blog. And I got the voicemail number up on the screen, 347-509-5168. And we actually got a pretty good voicemail in, which is why I'm going to be doing a video that I'm going to be doing. So, um, yeah, Our, it's the new generation of gamers. Are they entitled? And when I say they, I'm not meaning every single one. But are we getting a new generation that has expectations that aren't realistic? Well, I don't know. But let's let's find out. Responding to your question, uh, started in '77. My first set didn't even have dice in it. It had chintz she drew from a cup. It had the wizard on the front was a, a wand, and the knight on the front was a bow that made no sense. Yeah, the the art and the uh, initial uh, basic set was a little, a little wacky. Sense. Uh, a friend introduced me in '77. I had no one to play with us until 1980. I played my first game in 1980, and I played until 2021, of which probably 75 to 80 percent of that was dungeon mastering. So until 2021, 77 to 21 is 44 years, give or take, and introduced. Um, a shit ton of people to to gaming, um, and it, like many of us, the majority of that time was spent DMing. I know that's how my initial years were. I was, if it was D and D, I was the only DM. Or I should say, if it was a fantasy RPG, I was the only DM. So, um, but you know, such, such is the lot in life. I had a great time. Now I am mostly a player, but I do run games at conventions. I at one time had three games going a week. That didn't last real long, though. Uh, taught about 58 people how to play. And my last group was in 2021 because they broke me. With the um, new entitled generation of players and their new political ideological gameplay, uh, I just had to hang up my shingle and close up my books. Now, actually, there's more to this. Uh, message that I, I'm not a terribly long message, but there's more that I might delve into in a later video. But is there an issue with entitled players? I I gonna say there certainly have always been entitled players, right? Um, but I haven't seen the issue to this extent as I've seen it with. 5e. Now, I don't run 5e, so how would I know? Well, right before COVID, um, I was running games at a game store with a group out in uh, Long Island, New York. And, you know, we had an open table at, at this point. And with the open table, we had a player who wanted to join our, our game. I was running Swords and Wizardry Light. And I'm like, Real easy. Sure, sit down, roll up a character. What are you playing? We're playing Swords and Witchery Light. Well, what's that? It's 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 like D and D because apparently they were a five E player. Okay, um, my character is a winged halfling, and I've got this magic sword. I go, no, you don't. And this was an adult, by the way, twenty ish, but an adult. I wasn't dealing with a teen. I go uh, right politely. Go no, you don't. You got to roll up a new character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, this is the character I want to play. I go. Well, I don't have winged halflings, um, and I don't have characters starting out with magical weapons. It's a first and second level party. But this is what I want to play, and I never had those issues back in the day. Now I'm sure. Others did. Sorry, we don't allow assassins in my group. Yeah, but that's what I want to play. Well, it's disruptive. 
All right. All right. If you want to play at my table, right, you're going to uh, follow the basic rules. And my basic rules are, I don't guess I don't have flying halflings with uh, magical weapons. And by the way, he sat down and he rolled up a character. Surprisingly, he had two 18s on 3d6, but so with your light, maximum bonus you're going to get is a plus one. You're not really doing much. Um, then uh, he's like, are, are you sure I can't be a flying half one? I'm like, I'm sure. Well, can I be a halfling that, you know, learns to fly? I'm like, no. And again, this person was an adult, but they were a 5e player. And there's a, this, listen, I know there's the idea of, yes, but can I jump this, this, this crevice? Crevasse. Yes, but you're going to have to roll really, really well to make it all. Okay. Yes, but. I'm not doing yes, but with flying fucking happens. Okay? But I've also listened to stories. I've heard stories where players come in, not just with expectations that, well, it's in the book, I get to use it. So I understand that one. But Oh, no, I want to, I, there's no drow in your world, but I want to be a drow, or drow, however you pronounce it. Well, no. And again, this has been around to some extent since the beginning of the game, but my recollection in high school and college is that you said no, and if it's not in my world, oh, okay. And people rolled with it. But now the expectation seems to be bigger, better, more powerful, uh, and you're supposed to be enabling the wishes of your players. And it's a group activity, which means that for the group to gather along, uh, there's got to be some give and take, and mostly it's got to be a lot of give. You've got to give back as a player. you got to adjust. It, you know, and I think we've lost some of that. I think society's lost some of that. I think society's become much more me, me, me. Right? The success of your character in... D and D, AD and D. The earlier editions was based on on group play. You tried, I know I tried at the DM to keep any single character from becoming uber powerful and overpowering the importance of the rest. Whereas with Five E, they're all uber powered, so anyone can do pretty much what they want. I think the system is good. I'm just not happy with the implementation of it. But that's just me and and my thoughts. And this individual, I'm going to make another observation. They stopped playing in 2021. Well, what happened in that time frame? 2020 was the pandemic. They probably had the opportunity to play numerous sessions, numerous games online. With people who only knew about D&D prior to that by watching real play, uh, fake D&D on, uh, online, right? And they're coming into D&D and they're coming in using the most popular rule set ever. And their expectations are... Not necessarily realistic. I can see why in 2021, my caller, whose name I don't know, and like I said, there's more to this vo voicemail that I find very interesting and is enough for another topic unto itself, that they, they, they burned out. 
And they were running three games a week at one point. We don't know if that was 2021, but they burned down on player entitlement. And that sucks, right? Because D&D is a social game. When I say D&D, I mean, any of the RPGs out there, uh, even if you're playing the ones that, like, Fate and other stuff, they're group activities. Even if I don't like the rule system, the way they play out is generally to RPG. It's a role-playing. It's an env- a social interaction time. The dice are secondary to the social interaction of the group. And if one player starts acting entitled, you start ruining it for everybody. But that's just the way I see it. Maybe you got a different opinion. Well, if you do, you can either leave a comment or you can call the voicemail at 347-509-5168. Also, Last two days on the uh, Gygax Humble Bundle. You can get there at 10 cards. There's tavern.games slash Gygax. There's stuff from Gary, Ernie, Luke, uh, those creators that are adjacent to the Gygaxes. So it's a great pile of gaming material in PDF. Give it a look. If you use, if you use our affiliate links, you help this channel. Like, subscribe, you know the thing. All right, folks, on that note, um, be safe, be well, God bless, for this nice weather well. We'll be back again tomorrow with another video. And uh, ooh, Wednesday, live stream. All right, laters. <laughs>